We decided to dig into calcium and phosphorus requirements in gestating and lactating sows, mainly because the relationship that calcium and phosphorus may have with lameness and um, prolapses that we're seeing in the industry with this increase in sow mortality. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Larissa Becker, a PhD student at Kansas State University. So Larissa, before we begin, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Yeah, so my name is Larissa Becker. I grew up on a pig farm in Fairmont, Minnesota, and then I did my undergrad at Iowa State and through some different internships really developed my um, interest for swine nutrition. And so I came down to K-State in 2020 and started my master's. And now I'm working on wrapping up my PhD and will be starting as a swine nutritionist with JBS in September. Thank you so much for having me on today. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to have you on. When it comes to raising healthy animals, you need more than the right solutions. You need the right partner who brings decades of industry expertise and a global team to put that knowledge to work for the advancement of your operation. At Fibro Animal Health Corporation, we are proud to work with you as your trusted partner. And I see you've been reviewing a lot of prior research lately that has been done on calcium and phosphorus requirements in gestating and lactating sows. So I guess to start us off, What kind of studies have you been looking at and how many studies have been done that have been conducted on calcium and phosphorus requirements for reproducing sows? Yeah, so um, we decided to dig into calcium and phosphorus requirements in gestating and lactating sows, mainly because of um, the relationship that calcium and phosphorus may have with lameness and um, prolapses that we're seeing in the industry with this increase in sow mortality. And so that led us to dig into the literature and just see what was all available out there. And there's actually not a lot of literature or research conducted on calcium and phosphorus in reproducing sows. And so there's two different main approaches um, to conducting this research. And one would be empirical studies where researchers can um, do a titration and feed different levels of calcium and phosphorus and then measure how those sows utilize the minerals. So that can be through sow and litter performance, um, urinary phosphorus excretion, or bone mineralization. But as we all know, that can be quite expensive and requires euthanizing sows. And so that can be difficult to do in the industry right now. So then another approach is um, a factorial design where researchers develop models. And so they use different components that the sows would use these minerals for. So a gestating sow is going to use these minerals for maintenance, maternal gain, fetal growth, and a very small amount for placental growth. And then in lactation, she's going to use these minerals for milk synthesis and maintenance. And so we dug into all the research that was available. And for empirical studies for gestating sows, there's only nine studies that have been conducted between 1974 and 2022. And so what we noticed throughout this project is that it highlights that there is a definite need for research in this area. And then for lactating sows, there's only seven studies that have been conducted back to 1974. And then for the factorial models, there's been seven models developed for gestating and lactating sows. So again, there is research out there, but it's not very robust, especially with the empirical data. A lot of those researchers had limitations where they could only compare two different levels of digestible phosphorus, and that can be really difficult when trying to define a requirement when you can really only compare it between two different levels. So what we noticed is that there is a definite need, and it really highlighted the Um, variation in calcium and phosphorus requirements for reproducing sows. Gotcha. So when looking at both of those types of study designs, so empirical versus factorial, what are some of the pros and cons that you can see from each? Yeah, for the empirical, um, mainly the limitations were just the study designs that were utilized. Um, Just to get enough replications, I think researchers chose to do 
just one or two different levels of digestible phosphorus. And so it's really hard to understand how she's actually utilizing those minerals and which one is better or versus what her true requirement is. And so the most robust data for empirical that we have is from um, the University of Wisconsin that was done in 2022. And those researchers used six different levels of digestible phosphorus and then measured how much phosphorus she is excreting in the urine to determine her digestible phosphorus requirement. And that study actually determined the requirement of six grams per day um, in gestation. And so if we think back to the NRC, which was um, developed in 2012, that is um, pretty close to the NRC requirement. So I know this might be a little difficult with so little research being completed, um, but based on what you've seen, what do you think your recommendations would be when feeding gestating and lactating sows, different calcium and phosphorus levels? Yeah. So for gestating sows, um, I'd say the requirement for digestible phosphorus after doing this literature review is between six and nine grams per day of um, STTDP in gestation. When determining the calcium requirement, it's really difficult because there's a lot of variation in the levels that were that have been fed in the industry. And so there's two different ways of determining that calcium requirement, and that can be through a ratio that is set relative to phosphorus or using the factorial models. But those ratios are relatively common, but there's a very large range. And so at the end of the day, when it comes down to feeding a sow, um, the appropriate total calcium to digestible phosphorus requirement would be between 2.2 to 1 up to 2.9 to 1. So there still is a lot of variation, and we don't exactly know how much calcium a gestating sow needs. And so through this project, it really highlighted that um, more research needs to be done in this area. So when comparing the empirical data and the factorial data for a gestating sow, um, and using that recommendation from the University of Wisconsin of six grams per day throughout all of gestation for um, sows, that would actually be overfeeding phosphorus in early gestation, but then underfeeding phosphorus in late gestation when comparing it to the factorial model. And with the precision feeding um, capabilities that are continuing to develop in the swine industry, we may be able to more precisely feed these sows to meet their requirements at every stage of gestation. And so as technology progresses, this may be an option um, to meet her phosphorus and calcium requirements throughout all of gestation. So then a lactating sow's requirement um, using the factorial model, the um, components for that would be for milk synthesis and her maintenance needs. And so those are relatively constant throughout lactation since she is trying to milk and grow a successful litter. And um, the most robust data from an empirical study would give us a requirement between 19.4 and 22.1 grams per day for a lactating sow. And then a total calcium to digestible phosphorus ratio to use would be 2.3 to 1 which is actually what the NRC recommends as well. Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again, Larissa, for coming on the show and sharing all that research with us. Yeah, thank you for having me and feel free to reach out with any questions that any of the listeners may have. Absolutely. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week.